Satya, it's so great to have you involved with this year's Snapdragon Summit for Qualcomm. Look, uh, Qualcomm and Microsoft have a very long story of partnerships, and uh, we're incredibly proud how this partnership is really expanding and becoming more relevant. I think today we're working together on next generation Windows PCs, mixed reality, Microsoft experiences in mobile, collaboration, Teams, uh, Teams collaboration devices for the enterprise, Azure for Auto, many more. But our joint activity that I'm really excited about it is AI. Sure. And uh, we think that Gen AI may be one of the biggest opportunities ahead of us. I don't think there's anybody uh, better suited to tell us about this technology. So my question to you is, from your perspective, what do you think Gen AI is going to enable? No, first of all, it's such a pleasure to be with you, Cristiano, at the Snapdragon Summit. You know, as you said, both uh, you know, Qualcomm and Microsoft have a broad partnership today and it's been built over many years and we're really looking forward to what this next generation is. But to your point, I do feel that this, this generation of AI, Gen AI, you know, has, I think, the potential to be, quite frankly, as big as, say, the mobile revolution that you were very much part of or the cloud revolution or, the, you know, the web and the PC. It's that class. And if I had to sort of say, why do I think so? I think fundamentally, if you think about the dream of computing always was, can you make interfaces much more human friendly, much more natural? Can you augment human capability with computing? And I feel this generation of AI from a user interface perspective allows us. It is multimodal, it's multi-domain, and it's multi-turned, right? So it starts obviously with language, but it's quickly going beyond that. That I think will fundamentally change what an operating system is, what a UI looks like, how things, application interaction goes. So UI changes always are big, and this is a big UI change. The other one is we now have a new reasoning engine. This reasoning engine, just like say databases in the past, which we, we digitized people, places, things, and, and use things like relational databases, this reasoning engine is more like a neural uh, algebra uh, as opposed to relational algebra, and it finds patterns. It does summarizations. It does continuations, right? I mean, anytime you use something like GitHub Copilot, it gives you, oh, wow, this is a completely new thing to have an assistant that can reason about and help you create. So with these two things, I feel a reasoning engine and a new natural interface, pretty much all software categories can be changed. And the exciting thing for me is the system architecture underneath, the innovation that you're doing underneath is also changing, right? You know, I, I, there's a CPU, there's a GPU, there's an NPU all coming together to power these new experiences. So I think that's really what's exciting about Gen AI. Look, that's awesome. I, you know, we share the same view, especially when you think about user interfaces. When we go back memory lane in Qualcomm, I remember we all had our feature phones or BlackBerry, and then one day we saw your smartphone, and yeah. everything changed. And I think we may see this moment with everything. We may see this moment uh, with many of the devices, especially because personal computing in general is so much part of our lives today. And that's very, very exciting. Now, you would expect a company like Qualcomm, we're laser focused and building the best possible platform to enable the this technology on the devices at the edge. Yeah. So when you think about Gen AI experiences on the edge devices, working together with the cloud, um, how do you think this is going to evolve? Yeah, no, I think that's a very important thing. See, I, first of all, you, you sort of said the most operative word, right? At the end of the day, we have these large foundational models that are showing unbelievable capability, emergent capability, scaling laws, and GPT-4. I mean, it was a real breakthrough. So the interesting thing now is, if I look at the innovation that's coming, is on device, when you have a very powerful NPUs like the ones you're building, how do you compose an application that's built using both local compute and the cloud sort of inferencing, if you will, together to power? And that's sort of what we are enabling with our Windows uh, AI ecosystem in partnership with you, right? Whether it's the Onyx runtime layer, the Olive toolchain layer, how do you ride these hybrid AI applications. That's at the foundation level. The other thing is, let's not forget that any application is not just one big large model. It has many models. Many of those models, like a Llama or a Stable Diffusion or whatever, will run just very capably, just given the number of tops we're going to have, you know, thanks to the innovation you're bringing. So I think that we are literally going to have lots and lots of applications which will have local models, will have hybrid models, 
Uh, and that, I think, is the future of AI going forward. We completely agree. I, w- I was going to ask you, because after all, you are the ones who are building the system for it. You know, do you have a point of view on how you're thinking about, I know you're thinking about even the AI tool chain, some of the portability aspects of it, but you want to share a little bit about your vision for hybrid no. AI? Look, absolutely. Uh, and that's one of the reasons uh, we are so excited about this. And actually, we, we share, I think, this view that we actually can change the industry and how change computing with it. For example, the when we think about edge AI, when you are at the edge, you have a couple of things that are very unique to the edge. For example, you have latency, you get response in real time. You have real time contextual information yeah. about where you are certain and what are you doing. And then you have the ability, as you outline, to leverage this distributed computing platform that exists in all of those devices and help not only accelerate what's coming from the cloud, but also to democratize you yeah. know, those experiences. So when you put those two things together, and I, I want to go back to the phone example, let's just think about a phone. You use your phone, and today we have been thinking about you have, you have the computing platform, you have all the applications that you're going to use, and you have the human, and uh, you go in and you touch two or different applications. But now you have this engine that is running pervasively, trying to predict your every moment and try to understand what you're going to do, get better over time. And like having a co-pilot for yep. everything you do. And that's not only unique to phones. So think about cars, for example. Yeah. And some of the collaborations we're having in the digital transformation of the automotive industry, which is incredible. When you think about the car, there's nothing better than natural language communication when you're behind the wheel, especially for the many things you're going to do on the car. But then also all those cameras in the car and they take all those images, whether they use it for autonomy and assisted driving. Now you have images that you can superimpose things and and I think we're gonna have a completely new user experience. And of course, the best example of this, of the two things working together and what we do at the edge is next generation Windows PCs yeah. with the co-pilot. Yeah. And, and especially, I think the fundamental impact they will have on productivity in, in everything you do, I think, where your computer, what you're creating, getting entertained and all of that. So it's an incredible future ahead of us with uh, Gen AI, including on devices. Fantastic, fantastic. So since we mentioned about the PC, can you share a little bit of your vision of when we have all of this capability running on the PC, what is going to be the new window experience uh, and other devices touched by Microsoft? No, absolutely. And so in some sense, you, you, you described it very well because I think we are at that moment where in some sense, yes, it's the PC, but there is a new generation of AI PCs that I think are getting created. So the work we're doing together, you know, is sort of going to bring together these experiences that cannot be done uh, without sort of a new system architecture. You talked about how we're going to bring together the CPU and the NPU together to support these new experiences. And the marquee experience for us is going to be Copilot. And so when I think about Copilot, you know, perhaps the last time, you know, when Windows first came, you know, together, we had the start button. The Copilot is like the start button. Uh, it becomes the orchestrator of all your app experiences. So, for example, I just go there and express my intent, and the, it either navigates me to an application or it brings the application to the copilot. So, it helps me learn, query, create, uh, and completely changes, I think, uh, the user habits. The other thing that also is, it's not just about our copilot, it's as you described it, every the application developer will have, thanks to the work the two of us are doing, great tooling support to build their own co-pilots, build their own AI features. And we see that, right? I mean, even some of the innovation Meta with WhatsApp is doing on the new Windows PCs with taking advantage of the onboard NPUs to bring new video effects and so on to WhatsApp. That's like a cool thing to see. And we're now seeing many application developers like that who are going to sort of really use the tooling to build AI native features for the new AI PC era. That's great. And actually, one thing I would like to mention, which is what is also exciting about how we think about these experiences is the stuff that we're doing together on Windows PCs, 
with the activity we, we having about multiple devices, it's also gonna be able to have extensions of the copilot when you think about the other devices that are around you. That's right. And that I think, in fact, it's because obviously you power different operating systems with your systems, whether it's an auto or it's in mobile, of course, on the Windows side, our approach will be a very ecosystem approach. So that's why it's not about sort of getting app developers to build only for one, but to be able to build applications that can go everywhere. And that's where I think a lot of the attention paid to the tooling side of it uh, and the portability side of it, I think would be a real breakthrough. And there's no better approach to bring innovation. Right. Satya, thank you so much for the partnership. As I said, we're incredibly proud and let's continue to innovate Absolutely. together. Thank you so much, Christian. I'm really looking forward to the launch of some of this stuff and then seeing what application developers uh, do with it and also how what ultimately users do with all of this innovation. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.